What if Mega Shark from Sci Fi had gotten into a battle with Shin Godzilla? Would the shark become sushi? Or would the king of the monsters fall victim to this massive shark? Let's find out today. We will begin talking about Shin Godzilla as I'm more familiar with his scalings. We will go over his feats, calculations, and his statements. And because his fourth form is the only relevant one, we will only use this. Everything I use from Shin Godzilla will be from both Goji Chronic and Godzilla King of the Monsters. Both YouTubers are amazing at power scaling and are my go-tos for stuff like this. Now let's begin. So starting off with his kinetic energy, he gets himself in the city block level of attack potency. This is consistent as Godzilla is able to no-sell tank shells, missiles and consorta endure bunker busters, which all have calculations getting these anywhere from small building level up to large building level. His main attack though is his more lethal atomic breath. Shin Godzilla's atomic breath is clearly a weapon of mass destruction, easily slicing through buildings like a hot knife with butter. The beam is consistently shown to be in the large town level to small city levels of attack potency. So already Shin Godzilla seems like a force to be reckoned with. But we can get him higher though, but I don't agree with these high ends which I'll explain at the end of this section. Moving on to his higher ends we have this supposed statement of Shin's atomic breath. Now according to Godzilla King of the Monsters it's sorta approved by Toho, but anyways. If this is approved by Toho, it could get Shin's overall attack potency all the way up to mountain level. The next scan basically tells us that if Shin does explode and die, it would shoot up even higher in AP and give us island level of attack potency. Now here is why I don't agree with the mountain to island level scalings. First, we're given statements that despite his durability, all the bunker busters that landed on him did severe damage to him, which should be a large building to city block level attack since there was a good bit. Second, we are told in the movie that not even Shin Godzilla would survive a nuke, but seeing as the humans are consistently wrong about him it's kind of ignored. But then we are told by Hideaki Anno that this is true, and because he's the director I honestly don't agree with the high-end scalings, but we are gonna give it to Shin anyways, you'll see why when we cover our giant fish friend. Now moving on to his speed. Shin Godzilla doesn't ever really dodge or react to anything. But where his speed comes from is his atomic breath. The atomic breath is confirmed to be made of photons. Because of this, Shin Godzilla's attack speed is easily at speed of light. He would also have casual subsonic to subsonic plus movement speeds as he can aim the breath at stealth bombers. So with our overall stats, Shin Godzilla would physically range in the city block levels of AP, he would be in the large town to small city levels of AP via the atomic breath. With extremely inconsistent wanks we can get the AP of his atomic breath to mountain level. With self-destruction he would get into island level. In terms of speed he would fall in the subsonic to subsonic plus category with simple head movements, but with the atomic breath he can reach speed of light. So Shin Godzilla seems to be a true beast of power. Now how much of a chance does our giant shark have? Mega Shark isn't your ordinary great white. Obviously, this is a Megalodon. But these ones in the movies are true titans when it comes to size, more on its size later. The first Mega Shark didn't do exactly anything to note either than biting the Golden Gate Bridge in half and battling with a giant octopus, but I cannot find a calculation on that so it'll have to be ignored. So moving on to the second movie where Megashark battles a 1,500-foot crocodile, we can get some good information on its scaling. We have a few things to talk about. The first feat we are going to talk about is the submarine feat in the second movie the Megalodon literally and I mean literally swallows an entire Virginia-class submarine. The calculation ends up getting this into multi-city block. The next thing to talk about is the shark's kinetic energy. Crocosaurus, as I said, is stated to be 1,500 feet long. Mega Shark is at least relative to its size according to this pixel measurement. The Mega Shark is 926.89 feet to 1,500 feet long as the two are basically the same size. Because of the size of the creatures, their kinetic energy allows them to get some easy town level scaling. This is consistent as the third movie shows Mega Shark easily shrugging off UGM 133 Trident 2 torpedoes. 
Thanks to Ace of Spades, he has told me that these torpedoes range from as low as 5 to 475 kilotons, which is small to large town level. We are also told in the second movie that nothing the military has is able to stop the creatures, which you could argue city level because of this statement. Before we get into Megashark's high ends let's talk about its speed. In the first movie, Megashark had leaped out of the water at a confirmed speed of 702 km per hour, he jumped so high that he could grab a plane. The infograph tells us that it only took Megashark 20 seconds to get to the plane's level. Also in the first movie, while Megashark is battling the giant octopus, we get a good look at the shark's ramming speed, specifically in this instance. The shark rams the octopus super quickly, but how fast was it? Well, it's calculated from the two frames that Megashark rammed the octopus with speeds up to 636.569941 meters per second, or supersonic, near supersonic plus. The final noticeable and most impressive speed ends is from the third movie which we are going to have to talk about the torpedoes again. Megashark is confirmed to have these said torpedoes and Megashark is consistently shown dodging, outmaneuvering and even parrying them. These torpedoes move at Mach 23, giving Megashark hypersonic plus combat reaction speeds. This shark is extremely fast, it's kind of scary, but moving on. Now getting into Megashark's high ends, we can finally talk about the fourth movie, Megashark vs. Colossus. Colossus is a massive Cybertronic superweapon of destruction built in the Cold War by the Russians to fight the Americans in case they got too advanced in their weaponry. Colossus and Megashark are sort of relative as Megashark can shake off every attack Colossus uses against him. So starting off we have a statement that Colossus is the strongest weapon ever built by humanity, which automatically means it surpasses the Tsar Bomba and the satellite shown in the movie, but we'll talk about the satellite later, you'll see why. The Tsar Bomba has been confirmed to have an output of 50 to 100 megatons of TNT, or mountain level granting Colossus some easy mountain level scaling, Megashark scales. One impressive feat we can talk about is Colossus throwing Megashark into space. This is honestly super impressive considering it took Megashark a few seconds to reach space especially because Megashark is huge and he took no damage from the fall. Using the size given to Megashark we get a feat that reaches small country level. Megashark scales as I said because it took no damage from the fall. The second feat we are going to talk about is performed by neither Colossus or Megashark, but the previously mentioned satellite. The satellite ends up getting tilted towards the moon during Megashark being thrown. The satellite proceeds to cut into the surface of the moon. With calculations the satellite emits large country level plus to continental plus levels of AP per second. Because the laser ran for 8 to 11 seconds, it becomes continental plus to multi-continental. Colossus simply upscales as again we are told he's the strongest weapon ever built and Megashark upscales too as he's relative to Colossus. We have one more calculation to talk about, the satellite feet again. They'll just put the feet here since we already talked about it. But because of how long the beam cut into the moon, the calculation gets into moon level. So overall, the Megalodon would get anywhere from multi-city block all the way to multi-continental with possibly moon level as he upscales off of Colossus who he's relative to. When it comes to speed the shark has subsonic plus movement speeds with subsonic plus to hypersonic plus combat and reaction speeds. So comparing the stats of our two combatants there is a clear power gap between Shin Godzilla and Megashark. Specifically, there's a 18,348.6239 times power gap between the two when using Shin Godzilla's wanked island level scaling and Megashark's multi-continental scaling. Megashark seems to have almost every single advantage over Shin Godzilla either than range and attack speed. But because Shin Godzilla has zero reaction and combat time, he's just gonna get speed blitzed and one-shot by Megashark. And if the nuclear reactor Shin Godzilla has does cause him to explode, it's most likely not gonna affect Megashark. Megashark is the winner of this matchup with negative difficulty. I would like to give a shout out to everyone I put on the screen as they are all the people who gave me the information I have put into this video. This was honestly a fun matchup. I would like to apologize due to this video being a little sloppy and the AI voice. But anyways please subscribe to see more content like this.
Next video we will be covering a certain shark with tentacles who is possibly as iconic or even more iconic than Megashark. Bye guys.